me. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Weekly Bugle. Hope everyone has had a good week so far. Hope you all had a good weekend. I know there were lots and lots of MCP events happening. I think I saw Sam posted on Facebook that uh, MCP had regained the top spot for a number of games played this weekend, taking it back off Star Wars Legion. Um, so yeah, hopefully you've all well, had a good you time. You mean and, Dead uh, Game Legion? Quinn, there you go. Yeah, Dead Game Legion. Oh, yeah. Dead Game Legion. Wargaming Dad, good evening, buddy. John, hope you're well. Justin, Rhino versus Wakanda Rhino. David, good evening, even to you, buddy. Snow Lost, excited to see what community cards won. David Cameron, not that one. I, for one, think this new vulture looks nothing like the character. <laughs> I agree, David, I agree wholeheartedly. Um, buddy Langer, hi all, glad they went with OG Rhino and not the new Robo Rhino from the movie or game. Yeah, I, I agree with that, Quinn. I do, I do prefer, um, I really like the look of Rhino, really, really like the look. But before we jump into Rhino, Quinn, how the hell are you doing, sir? You need to properly introduce me, I've got a thing to say. Quinn's here. No, do better! Quinn, master of gingers, is here. It's me, the racist goblin. <laughs> You are a fucking. Because that was a comment on one of the videos. People got very upset. What? Well, because I don't that, like fucking you don't like cat. characters. Yes. Anyway. And, and to clarify, the characters themselves aren't boomers. It's just that they appeal to boomers, and I'm vehemently opposed to most boomers. Hi. You're I actually don't boomer. think I am You're a, a boomer. Fucking millennial. I am a. Millennial. You're either millennial or Gen X. I don't know which. Yeah, I am indeed a uh, a millennial. Um, but yeah, how's how's your week been, Quinn? Or week week like week since? Like obviously, you know. yeah. I mean, uh, I've been playing a lot of Marvel Snap, nice. uh, ma ma mainly because the DPS two times in Overwatch two are like eight minutes, <laughs> so I get like two games of Snap in for every game of Overwatch. <laughs> that that is one of the serious appeals, isn't it? To Marvel Snap is the fact that you can just like get so many games in. Um, it it, it really, may be fast, really yo. Is. Yeah, it really is. It really is. But hope hope you've all had a good uh, a good weekend as well. Um, if you could leave a like on the video, we've got sort of fifteen people in chat. Don't do that. It's chat correct. right now. Leave a like. The algorithm, Quinn. I, I don't know. The ah, algorithm. yes, the 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 all knowing algorithm that we uh, are beholden to. Racist Goblin sounds like a 2000s Counter-Strike username. <laughs> it does actually, Snow Loss. Quinn is making Rich cringe. Yeah, Bobby, Quinn always makes me cringe. It tends um, to be the other way around, typically. Whatever, whatever. Look, we I'm cover... An old man, old man we, we, we cover a broad demographic between us, and our views on things don't always align. Let's just but leave it at that count. mine are correct. Mm, I mean, My, yeah. mine are more correct than yours. Fucking socialists. Anyway, <laughs> holy bastard, man. Um, Quinn. So we did get. So we had a little tease last week, didn't we? Um, and we did get a little bit more on Rhino. Um, so we got to see the miniature, but we did get a little bit more information on Rhino as well. But let's talk about that miniature at first because. What a stunning job they've done with it. Again. It, it do be lovely, don't it? It's it's a really nice... And it is... I think somebody put it in the comments last week um, that it, it kind of looks like he's in that football... American yeah. football pose. Is I that a linebacker? Is that I what they're called? Know. I don't that's know what a, the position that's a, is. That's but... an American football word. <laughs> yes, something like that. Um, but yeah, so I do like it. I think it looks really good. He's but... a halfback. <laughs> but we did get a little bit more information, Quinn. Um, Glenn, hope you're well, buddy. Um, so information that we got was obviously as part of spider Furs, but, and probably not surprisingly, um, he's also part of Criminal Syndicate as well, which is nice because yeah. I think he's going to be like Juggernaut Light, right? That yeah, kind of Yeah, I'm feels... imagining like... 
a slightly lower threat juggernaut and like you know crimson like juggernaut anyway it's gonna be nice for them to have an inaffiliated sort of juggernaut-esque option yeah and that's a large base which is always nice to see yep um, lovely large base which i think most not all because star lord's in there but i think most standalone characters are usually on large bases. Maybe Kingpin actually as well. Well, they're, they're, they're 50 mil or higher, right? Yeah, typically. apart from Star-Lord, because... I think Star-Lord is literally the only one. Yeah, I think he may be. Uh, unless you count... Oh, no, I was just going to say, like, Ultimate Encounters, but, yeah, they're on them as well. No, that um, big boys. Hey, that's not Paul Giamatti in a mech suit. You are right, Lou, and thank God it's not. Um, I, I will I will say, if we're going to get, like, more Spider-Verse characters alongside Rhino, because that feels like the obvious place to go. Crimson have actually had, like, some releases this year. Maybe we have some Spider-Verse next year. Um, if they do Vulture, I, I want, like, at least a slightly mechanised suit. Oh, <laughs> I, no, I, do, I, I want do not original. Want, like, no, I don't want, like... Old man with a like a puffy fur collar and like actual feather wings. No, nope. like I don't. want traditional. I want traditional. Like give him mech wings, but keep like don't give him a helmet. I don't want vulture with a helmet, or like give the option for a helmet, but I don't yeah. want him with a helmet. I, I I would very much like to see um, Electro in there as well. I think is my Blue Electro, Electro shocker. Or star... Blue Electro or Star like. Like no, I want green and yellow Electro. Electro. I want traditional Electro, yeah. You, you just want to recreate the meme, don't you? Yeah, basically. Um, uh, who's the third member of that meme? It's Rhino, Goblin, Electro. Oh, it's Vulture, isn't it? Yeah. Vulture, yeah. Um, I just want a new mission to come out with him. Uh, so the one thing I can guarantee, guys, there is not it's a new there's mission, no mission coming out. So we've seen the we've seen the packs. We've seen the content packs. Or the... Con the, 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 the what comes with him. So let me just pull this up here. Um, uh, also, Glynn, you are very much correct. Rich does want Boomer Vulture. I do want Boomer Vulture, yes. So as you can see there, guys, really includes one Rhino miniature, one base, one character stat card, and three team tactics cards. So for anyone hoping um, <clears throat> that they were going to get a new, um, a new crisis card, then unfortunately, no. So we're left with just what we what we make, what we make. So that's all we're left with. I mean, our, our ones are great. Everyone else is terrible. Ours, we we've, we've made some. We the, the the community as a whole has made some really good ones. Some of them that, but, but could, especially us, we've made some very different ones, Quinn. Probably you've I, made some very different ones. My I've, ones are like fine. I have gone very uh, very off piste. I think is the uh, is the word, isn't it? Um, but yeah, so there we go, guys. So Rhino, look, we don't know any stats about him at the moment, but you'd imagine he's going to be a size three or a size four, Quinn. Probably a four, size four. Like, um, with the big base four. I think they could yeah. have made a size three Rhino if they wanted, like 50 you know, more base. Being size four in my head almost automatically puts you into being a four threat character i don't think we're um, like I'm, I'm trying to think like if we'd ever see a size four three threat that's, like even though i don't feel like, like rhino, real big even though i don't feel like shit. rhino should be a three a four threat character for me he feels like a b tier character like he's probably a C tier character. Let's be honest. Well, yeah, he probably is. So I, you know, I don't feel like he deserves it. But like, oh, can, can you remember any really memorable Rhino moments other than the fact that he's <laughs> in a lot of Spider-Man things? <laughs> I'm just laughing at Justin, advanced R and D included. Yeah, it's advanced R and D, heave ho, um, and field dressing, and it's already bad. <laughs> it's already rotated out. <laughs> no, 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 they have different set symbols on them. Therefore, they become legal again. <laughs> Yes, so that's that'd, what be I want. Quite, that'd be quite good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, give us Sandman, Potleaf, Electro OP. Count Lavender says Yuck. I don't know what you're saying Yuck to there, Count Lavender. So if you want to, uh, it, it could be a myriad of things. It could, yeah. Um, three team tactics cards, odds of a reprint. I'm hoping not. It did. It did say on the wording that there were three cards that helped him out a lot. So I'm hoping that... What's an old card that would help him out? Uh, 
Smash. Indomitable. Reprint of Smash. If he's size four, reprint of Smash. Oh, I really hope not. I really, really... I mean, Smash would make some sense. But I really, I really hope they might not. have been saying yuck to old, like, Boomer Vulture, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. Uh, let me just sort out the volumes here. Okay, guys, so... What are we going to do now? Well, you guys have been submitting for the last, like... Three weeks, I think, when isn't it? Um, maybe crisis more. cards, maybe even a month, yeah. And this was kind of one that we we were talking about them, weren't we, Quinn? And then we'd not even discussed it mid show. And I kind of just said, Look, it'd be really good to do this. And then before we knew it, we had a channel dedicated on the <clears throat> on the Discord and we were having people submitting them. Yeah, um, that, that doesn't happen often at all. You just like springing things on me in the middle of these. No, no, never. No, no, it's not, it's not like we talk for about half an hour before we like start these either, right? It's not uh, like you'd have an opportunity to talk to me. Well, no, but I'd not even thought about it before we started. Uh, Madam Webb, this is good... giving me, oh, we're moving the bugle to Wednesday vibes. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, so, guys, um, what what are we doing? What what are we what are we doing right now so as some of you may know every month we run our uh, patreon event when we say patreon event um there is a tier on patreon that if you subscribe to you get automatic entry into it but there's always other ways uh to to enter the event as well um and we're coming to a close now the november one's almost done december one what we decided we would do is rather than using standard crisis cards we were going to open it up to you guys the community to make your own crisis cards and what we would do is for the month of december's event uh, we would not only um, restrict the crisis cards that could be chosen in your rosters so that it's just going to be the crisis cards that we see now um, but also anyone who submitted an entry that we picked would also be invited to join us for the patron event and on top of that um i've decided because so many of you did them that not only the winners are going to get entry into the november draw but everyone who submitted so the 20 or so entries uh, you're all going to get a free entry into our prize draw uh, for november uh, giving you a chance to win a character pack of your choice standard to sort of person character pack um so quinn let's jump over let's take a look at the first ones if i can remember where it is get rid of that put this on here so the first winner and the first crisis card that we're going to include uh in uh december's patron event is by swedish troll so this is Big Wheel Bewilders Bystanders. It's going to be a 15 threat secure. Uh, and the setup is going to be place the big wheel target of opportunity on the central point of map C. Um, so just a single uh, a single target of opportunity, Quinn, in the middle of the in the middle of the map. Um, players score two VPs if they are securing the big wheel during the cleanup phase. Fairly straightforward. However, during the cleanup phase, after points are scored, the player not currently securing the big wheel must place it range three of its current position. So it's not within range three. It has to be placed range three. And then any character under the range tool whilst placing suffers one damage and gains one power. The thing I liked about this, Quinn, was that the risk of scoring it is that you can be damaged and it, for me, it kind of felt like how I want a Juggernaut to be, where mm. he has like a beam attack where he kind of moves to yeah, the end the, of the it. the beam attack idea was always one that was talked about yeah. when like speculating Juggernaut before yeah. he was even like revealed, because we knew he was coming at some point. Yeah, or maybe not even a beam attack, but like a beam play, you know, a range yeah, play. So, some sort of like, you put a movement tool down, people under it take damage, you get placed at the end of it, that yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. Um, there, there, there is one on the fly change I'd recommend for this one, just because okay. like I, I've scrutinised it a little bit more now. I'd like to make it a 3VP scoring. 
Yeah, do you know what? It Just be. because I think, like, two VPs, the risk reward, there is too much risk for the reward. Like, it, yeah, it, it's a very low scoring crisis. <laughs> Yeah, potentially. We can have a look. We can have a look at that. We can have a look at that one. But uh, yeah, so Swedish troll, uh, well done, buddy. Really, really enjoyed that one. Um, and yeah, and, and, and as I mentioned on Discord, we did tweak some of them. I've tried. I've tried to keep the wording as true to tactics cards. Sorry, to crisis cards in the in the game proper. Um, but there may be one or two errors here or there. Um, any questions about them, let me know, and we'll try and clarify that for them. But I think with the with most of them, Quinn, you can you can get the 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 intent of them right. The intent is there. So uh, number two then is going to be from. Uh, oop, there we go. Is going to be from uh, Alfred Farius, and I like this one, Quinn, because um, I love me a bit of Dracula. So Dracula needs a blood donation. Uh, it's another secure. We're going through the secures first. Um, it's 15 threat. Um, and the setup is place three donation centers, target of opportunity, as shown on map C. The scoring is players score two VPs for each donation center they are securing during the cleanup phase. But it's this little twist that I really like here, Quinn. So... Interact Donation Center. Apply the bleed special condition to the inter interacting character. And I was like, okay, this is interesting. Only injured characters or characters with the bleed special condition can contest the Donation Center. Um, I really liked that, Quinn. I liked I, I that think little... that's really cool. Little um, twist on I, it. I, I was just laughing at fucking... Debt Dave. Debt it's Morbid time. <laughs> it's Morbid time. We we do need Morbius in this game. We do need you Morbius. Know, we need any characters that can be Midnight Suns. Give me Elsa Bloodstone, damn it. <laughs> yeah, Elsa Bloodstone. Werewolf by night. Um but yeah, I really like this, Quinn. I think you agreed, didn't you? That little that little thing there uh, of like I, oh, I no, enjoy you... like the whole, you know, bleeding in order to like secure. I think yeah. that's fun. I also, it's definitely worth it because if you are scoring it, it's two VPs, potentially six VPs in a round. Very much. Oh, definitely. Cool. Yeah, definitely. But it's that thing then of like, okay, well, if you go up and do it and then your opponent does, do you need to go and do it again? Because, you know, you've then got two characters with bleed to try and contest it. I just, I really like it. And I mm. like the fact that, you know, often characters, they're, they're, their impact on the game once they're injured is less. Uh, so this is this is the anti sentinel scenario. Yeah. So there's going to be you know there's going to be some ones that are going to struggle with it. Um, so yeah. Also, mob and Fra Frenin Castle. Frenin Castle. I don't know. I don't know. Frenin Castle. I, I, I is. think that means Franken Castle, which I think is Frankenstein Punisher. I don't know, to be honest with you. Because he's know. called Frank Castle, isn't he? So Frank and Castle. Yeah, maybe. Um, maybe. War Wolf, what's cool? I mean, War Wolf is also um, Longshanks' big tribute show. Yep. So just to clarify where it says only injured, it means that a character is on their injured side. It doesn't mean that they've taken damage. So just to just to clarify that there. So, yep, well done, Alfred. Uh, Alfred Farias, you're the first one. Right, Quinn. We also said that as part of this, we were going to make one secure and one extract each. So we, we next did. up, Quinn, is Oh, why, why are we doing mine instead of Ron's? Pardon? Because they're in they're in uh number order. They're in threat number order. order. Uh, they're in threat I order. Want mine to be, I want mine to be last. Well, it's here now, so yeah, there we go. <sighs> so, Quinn, you came up with this one. Um 15 threat, Mjolnir are broken. God Tempest engulfs Earth. Four Storm Shelters, map B. Love a map B. Especially on 15 Easy. threat, map B seems really nice. Yeah, One I wanted VP... to add in a few lower threat options that weren't just Gamma. Yeah, which everyone else has done as well. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, one st so 1VP per Storm Shelter. However, Quinn, if you're not stood in a Storm Shelter, something's going to happen, isn't it? 
Well, yeah, you, you're going to be like out in the God Tempest. That doesn't <laughs> sound good for your health, does it? <laughs> it really doesn't. So, characters outside of range one. Now, we did originally, Quinn, didn't we, put not contesting... However, we realise that fuck you, Nebula and <laughs> the, the, Honey Badger. Then, like, your god just takes exception to Nebula and Honey Badger and goes, no, you, you in particular, you're stood next to a storm, sh- storm shelter. You're still getting struck, bitch. <laughs> yeah. So, range one of a storm shelter. And he also meets... Do you know what I like about this, Quinn, is that you huddle around the storm shelter and there can be no room at the inn, right? You yeah, can, exactly. You can position your characters so that they... But also, uh, because it's a map B, like, sort of the... Not not the the forward and backward angles of the bees, but like the side, like the the bees that are to the sides of each other, they're they're a long way apart. Yeah. <laughs> like if you want to go from one end of the board to the other to go fight on a different flank, you, you might have issues with the god tempers. You you need to be a fast mover with some good lightning defense. I mean, Sorry, it's also energy gonna defense. Make, like, oh man, crossbones getting caught out in the storm. <laughs> yeah. So lightning bolt. It's only a strength four, Quinn, but add dice. Okay, I've, wording's bad on this. Add dice equal. Add dice to the attack equal to the size of the target Just character. Just to clarify, this is Rich's bad word. It yeah. was fine. Um, after the attack is resolved, the character suffers the shock special condition. So for most, mm. it's going to be, be six, dice, six right? but it could be, Quinn, <laughs> up to nine. Look, the bigger characters act as lightning laws. It makes sense. I mean, technically, Dormammu stands higher than most, so he's more likely to get hit. Yeah. Um, like, he's going to have, like, more bolts coming at him. Yeah. And then there is, a little, there is a little stipulation on here, guys. So, this attack should be ruled by the non-controlling player, but is not considered to be an attack by that player. Cannot benefit from any superpowers, tactics, cards, or leadership. So, you know, if you've got if you've got cable with a re-roll, right? You don't get to re-roll your lightning bolt because that's that's just not uh, how it works. So that is Quinn's first one. Right. I really liked this next one, Quinn. It is simple and straightforward, but I think going to be really fun to play. Um, it's a 16 threat, secure, and it's slippery slime makes fools out of heroes. Uh, and this comes to us from Trim. This is going to be place four slime, target of opportunity, as shown on map B. And then for scoring, players score one VP for each slime they control during the cleanup phase. During the power phase, every character contesting slime drops all assets they are holding. Um, So, you know, nothing too bad if you're not holding something. But you're not going to want to be anywhere near the slime if you've got a couple of hammers on you or something like yeah. that. Or, um, or maybe some shards of something. Who knows? Dang, why are you all coming for my fun bots, says Justin. <laughs> right, just to clarify, mine is not in any way anti sentinel because you can just stand on the point. Yeah, Equally, exactly. sentinels have a thing that stops them being pulled off of points by most things. Yep. Yeah. Well, one of the I things I one also, of the things I really they can like pull about... people off of points with the snares. Yeah. Like No, I agree. I agree. One of the things I liked about this one, Quinn, was the fact that you can reposition somebody holding something yeah, so they like, are in range and there's nothing you, you they can just do throw about someone them. holding like three hammers next to the slime and you go, eh. Yeah. No, I did I did like I did like this one. I did like this one. Uh, it was yeah, just simple, plain. It, yeah, it, it's it's very simple, but like you know, you don't have to be super flashy to my King of Crisis. I yep. really like this. Yep. No, absolutely, absolutely. So well done, Trim. Uh, yours makes the cut. Next up, we have, and we we sort of did set the challenge out, didn't we, Quinn? That we wanted to see some good air maps, and we did. We saw a lot of good airs, but we didn't want everyone that we put in to be an air map yeah. for obvious reasons. But here we have a secure air map. It's going to be 19 threat and it is assault on camotage. Uh, this is submitted by Ronalicious. Um, place two protection sigils, target of opportunity, onto the central point of map A. Place the two C sigils on the other two points. A player's protection sigil is closest to their board edge and the siege sigil 
is the farthest from the board edge. Basically, one VP if you control yours, three VP if you control yours on the other side of the board. Fairly simple, straightforward. A character contesting its own protection signal, sigil, may re-roll one die when making defense or dodge rolls. A character contesting its own seat sigil are immune to the stagger, stun, and slow special conditions. Um, so I like this, Quinn, that risk reward of like, I need to leave enough people on my point, but get over to their point and get those. Because three VPs is a lot in this game. Um, mm. So I did I did like this one. Uh, what what are your thoughts on it? What 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 sort of stuck out? For uh, you? I mean, f first of all, I like how you referred to Ron as Ronalicious rather than just calling him Ron. Is Ronalicious? Keep Ron. <laughs> you, you know Ron. Everyone knows Ron. I know. People might not have met Ron or seen Ron or heard Ron, but they know of Ron. Oh, they've definitely heard Ron. He's not been on the channel, so they might not have heard Ron. No, but I mean, no matter where they are, they've probably heard his bellowing voice. He's <laughs> not that loud. He's <laughs> not actually, is he? For a big man, he's not no. that loud. Um, but go um, on. I, I, as for the actual crisis, uh, going to be a bit of bloodbath. I, I did very much like the uh, very Ron inclusion of um, re-rolling dodge dice because he wants that for Strange. <laughs> He really does. He, he wants Strange to not like melt against any sort of <laughs> thing thrown at him. Excuse me, sir. Do you have a moment to discuss Ron? <laughs> this is Malekith propaganda, says Justin. <laughs> um, but no, I, I liked this quint. Look, we've said before, haven't we, that there's so much potential for that A map. It felt like they made it for herbs and then have it, given it, it no very love. much feels like they could have gone with a completely different design of a map but like they'd already made herbs and that's why they included it you know what i'd yeah. really like to see from amg if we do eventually get this like crisis pack yep it is f the like last map in the alphabet yeah i'd like a map g i don't know what it is i'd like a map g Maybe it's just a singular central point. A central point, yeah, yeah. I mean, which we do have in 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 some of these as well as you saw. Like, but I think they 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 get around that, don't they, by saying just on the central point of C or E. Yeah, or maybe like it that. ends up being like I don't know, some sort of weird thing where it's like an E, but it's further away. Yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe. that could be a thing. Maybe, but yeah, so they. They are, Quinn, your five secures that you're going to be able to choose from um, for the December Patreon event. Stella says, yeah, I'm not sure why the oddball of the bunch is A of all things. Yeah, I mean, I gather with A, it's that thing of like they wanted you to grab something and bring it back. It forced you, but there are definitely other things that you can that you can do with it as well. So, so Quinn, on to the extracts and the only person Quinn apart from me and you that had two entries is Mr. Alfred Farius and it is with oh no I do apologize this is Roaring I've changed the order of things I've oh. changed the order of things of course you have now now we change the things yeah, there we go. So this is Roaring, uh, one of our Patreons. Um, so cure. So first of all, Quinn, the big thing here is 13 threat. So we've never, obviously 14 is the lowest we've seen. We did have a conversation, didn't we? And said, you know, we sort of discussed what the realistic minimum and also realistic maximum threat that you could look at in this game. And we sort of said that, you know, Maybe maybe twelve is like you as low said as you twelve. Could go. I said ten. You I did say ten. 10. I don't think. I, I think, think ten would be dumb but fun. Dumb but fun. Hey, there's nothing wrong with a a uh, uh, a bit of dumb but fun. Dumb but fun. Not <laughs> dumb but fun. Not double <laughs> T yeah, Quinn. That's very different. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm not sure why the oddball of the bunch. Is, okay, yeah. I had two entries, Hydra Arms, Deal, Secure, and Symbiosis. Yes, yeah, so, so what I meant, uh, Snorris, is that 
who got two into into here. Sorry. Um, so um, no fa cure found for mutation. No more mutants. Uh, randomly place three safe houses. Target of opportunity. Face down as shown on map C. Players score two VPs if a character they control is holding the mutant child, which is a civilian, during the cleanup phase. Uh, interact, safe house. Flip over the safe house. If it is empty, remove the token from the game. If it shows the mutant child, civilian, this character picks up the mutant child, civilian. Interact, mutant child. Pick up the mutant child. Fairly straightforward. I do apologise. Um, a character holding a mutant child cannot perform more than one move action per turn. A character that is holding the mutant child cannot use active or reactive superpowers and cannot be affected by enemy superpowers except for collision damage. Um, so I, I really like this one, Quinn, because it yes, it shuts down the person with the child, but... It also shuts down other people being able to use superpowers against them, being able to move them, that sort of thing. And for anyone that doesn't know what, at least I think this refers to, Quinn, is I think it's the original X-Men movies. I think it's number three where they find a child, basically, whose mutant powers are that they stop all other mutants. It, 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 it's Leech, right? Oh, it is Leech, Leech isn't it? Leech yes. stops powers. Yeah. It is Leech, yeah. But in the, the but in the X Men movie, it was a child. I don't think they ever named him as, all, as Leech. Like, I don't know if this one does it as well. Because Leech has got like the the mutated face, hasn't he? Isn't he a Morlock? Uh, so I think you might be thinking of this guy because he looks. So I think Leech in the cartoons was like a little frog dude. Yeah, I Whereas, don't know if he's like that in normal stuff. He he wasn't that in the movies because I've seen a picture of him in the movies. There's also a guy called Caliban, who I think might turn off powers as well. Yeah. But either way, I really like this one. I think it was really good. Um, I thought it was a it was a. I, I liked seeing the lower threat. Um, so and apparently he can just sense people and turn their like fear into things. I don't know why he was in the same search as mutant that turns off powers. Oh, anyway. Well, there you go. There you go. So uh yeah, well done Roaring. Um that one will be included. Number two for the extracts is and now I'm now I'm back on back on track, Quinn. Oh, is God. from Alfred Farius. It's a 17 threat extraction, which I love to see. You Quinn. You, you really like this one, don't <clears> you? And it is whack a mole man. <laughs> This is just brilliant. Yeah, Caliban Stephen Merchant, by the way, in oh, Logan. He has the power of being tall. Yeah. So, whack a mole man. Place four mole hills, target of opportunity, as shown on map D. Player score one VP. I've, see, messed up there, Quinn. I wrote one rather than. Yeah, I mean, it, it's almost like I told you about this yesterday and I'm not you didn't fix it. No, I didn't. <laughs> Play score one VP during the cleanup phase for each mole man successfully whacked this round. Interact mole hill. Roll one die. On a crit or wild, you have found a mole man, civilian. Place a mole man within range one of the mole hill. Mole man has two health and one defense on all attack types. Defense types, whatever. When a character does, I can say mole men have. Yeah, it's it, it's hard, isn't it? Because you've got to keep the wording the same as the yeah. thing. Like, it's yeah, but you I know, know, this is why AMG have never made another crisis. There was like too <laughs> yeah. many words. Um, like so words. He's got two health, one defense. When you daze mole man, he is considered whacked and is removed from the table. No more than two mole men can be on the table at any one time. Crisis effects do not damage more men. Um, br just brilliant. Absolutely oh, brilliant. Moles. This is just... I just love this one from the moment I saw it, Quinn. Really, really Love, it, love it first sight. Yep. Rich no, and mole men. 
It was. It was really good. It was really good. Yeah, and just to just to clarify as well, guys, we had lots of really good entries. We obviously couldn't we include <coughs> all of them, but just to clarify, every single one of them has been turned into a crisis card. I'm going to make them all available. I've got a Google Drive with them on there. Um, so, I mean, yeah. You've, you've got a Google Doc with them all. I've got a Google got Doc a Google up Drive. even with them on there. But they'll probably just go into... Um, they'll probably just go into Discord as well. I'll set up a channel. I'll probably yeah. I'll probably lock this channel down and I'll put them all in there um, after the fact. Um, and there were some really good... The other thing I will say, Quinn, as well, there were some really good ones that in person would have worked, but with the restrictions we have on TTS kind of didn't really let us do yeah. it because they were a little bit too finicky to, um, to, to to really work on TTS. So that is the reason why a few of them were, were sort of discounted, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, so um, Alfred really enjoyed this one. Uh, so well done to you. Uh, Rich already putting some Alert on the sting I'm about to get for being snuffed. <laughs> oh, snow loss. Here we go, snow loss. <laughs> I know yours was Hydra Arms deal, wasn't it? Oops, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Oops, I wrote that wrong. Um, uh huh. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, anyway, um, this one comes to us from Bleach Orange. Um, this is another extract, obviously. It's 19 threat. It's Armoured Mayhem at Stark, not Start. Again, I'm No, no, th this mistakes. is completely, like, unaffiliated with Stark Industries. Do you this know what it should have been? Do you know what it should have been? Hammer Industries. Stank. <laughs> oh. I, I was thinking Hammer Industries, because then you could have, like, the armour malfunction. <laughs> no, it should have been Stank. It should have been Stank. I mean, um, you do thank. This is true. This is true. So, place one hall of armor, target of opportunity, at the central point of map F. Place four armor assets, one at each other location on map F. Place score one VP for each armor held by a character they control during the cleanup phase. Player score an additional VP for each character they control holding an armor that is contesting the Hall of Armour during cleanup phase. Um, so basically, if you've got a character who is the, with an armour and contesting the Hall of Armour, it goes from one to two. So it encourages everyone to go to the middle and have a massive fight, basically, which I am more than okay with. Um, we, we, we do like a big punch-up, don't we? But I do like this next little bit in here, Quinn. So interact, armour, pick up the armour. Fairly straightforward. At the start of your character's activation, if it is holding an armour, again, wording hard because of rules, roll a die. On a crit, you may immediately make the below attack. It's a repulsor blast. Um, it's it, Basically, it's Iron Man's repulsor blast, Quinn. Four yeah. strength, range four, energy, and a push away on a short. Forced push away because it's Iron Man. Forced push away, yeah, on a wild and it's short. Uh, on a wild, you may place this character within range two of its current position. That's to sort of show the, you know, you're getting to use the little, you know, sort of. You, you've done like a little jump with the rocket boots. Yeah, yeah. Uh, hit, this character adds one die to its next attack action, this activation. A block, this character gains one power. A blank, there's no effect. And then a failure, this character gains the stagger special condition. So again, Quinn, I like the risk-reward of having the armour. You you have as much chance as getting an extra free attack as you do losing an action, which I really, really like. I, I do approve. Really I, I like, like how one. everyone just becomes Moon Knight. <laughs> Everyone becomes Moon Knight. Well, and, and, and just to clarify for the timing as well, because this is at the start of your activation and it's not an action, if you gain a stagger, your first action you has to, to be to remove that stagger. So I do um, I do like that quite a lot. Uh, so what have I missed? Got on 
uh, got on break a little late. Um, uh, you, you missed the fact that you were in the contest. Yeah, the big wheels, big big wheels made it Swedish Tron. You miss Quinn apologising to boomers. <laughs> You'll see me dead before that happens. <laughs> I might fucking kill him. Um, so yeah, there we go. Right, like you could <laughs> ah, very easily. Um, I'll just open the curtains or put a bright light on. You sure about that, buddy? You sure about that? That can't block UV, can it? Little ginger bastard. Uh, I can do that. I can do that. I'll be fine. Um, right. Next up, we've got my first entry, Quinn. And it is very thematic. Whoa, whoa, your first entry. But weren't we both supposed to do a, a secure and an extract? Well. What's going on here? I don't, I don't have a secure, do I? But I'll show you the other one. What? So... This is mine, guys. Daily Bugle, extract, 24 threat. And all through the house, not a creature was stirring. Or was there? Da, so, da, if, da. so for anyone that doesn't know, Santa Claus is an Omega-level mutant <laughs> in the Marvel comics and has, on multiple occasions, beaten the shit out of top-tier characters... He's wielded the Infinity Gauntlet with all of the gems. He's taken on and defeated the Illuminati. Um, and, uh, yeah, so here we go. Set up. Place one Christmas tree, target of opportunity, in the centre of the map. Each player places one Grinch's lair, target of opportunity, within range three of their table edge. For scoring... Players immediately score two VPs each time they hide a present in their Grinch's lair. So, first thing is, Quinn, interact, Christmas tree. Roll one die, and on a hit, crit, or wild, you pick up a Christmas present, which is going to be an asset. Oh, on yay, a block, Christmas! Yay, Christmas! Um, on a block or blank... Pick up a Christmas tree, but also suffer the below attack. Oh, sorry, pick through. up a Christmas tree? Uh, pick up a Christmas present, even. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> um, on a failure, do not pick up a Christmas present and suffer the below attack. So the first attack, Quinn, is called He's Making a List. And it's quite simply just a five-strength energy attack. Um, and you have to take the attack. So hit crit or wild. You do nothing. So you've got a 50% chance, Quinn, of it not happening. Um, you've got a 1 in 8 chance of not picking up anything and and being attacked as well, basically. Um, I feel like this didn't follow all the rules and restrictions you set up. I Well, well that that's, you know, that's the purpose of being in power. You don't have to what, follow the rules, What rules right? did I set up, Swedish troll? We, we didn't sign a fucking Magna Carta. <laughs> Um, so, interact Grinch's lair. Hide a Christmas present in their Grinch's lair. A character cannot hold more than one Christmas present. A character cannot hide a Christmas present the same round it picked one up. There you go, Rich made up Map G. <laughs> exactly. Um, oh, there you go, Crimson Dynamo for Christmas. Um, so, however, Quinn... Santa, as we know, he's checking it twice. So during the cleanup phase, any character holding a Christmas present suffers the below attack. So the attack is called, he's going to find out who's, who's naughty, naughty or nice. Or nice. <laughs> it's a strength six attack. However, this attack type will always be the target character's lowest defense dice pool. Now, why it's not lowest defense stat is you've got some characters like Vision, for example, who is two two four, but one of those twos is going to be a five, so it'll automatically get past any, um, any sort of defensive tech that uh, that character any bit may of have. Fuckery you're gonna do? Yeah. we'll get round it. So during this attack, no tactics cards or reactive superpowers may be used. Before damage is dealt, the target character is thrown short directly towards the Christmas tree. So how do you do that? Well, you take the tool. And it's just a straight line, basically. Um, if this attack deals damage, the attack, not the throw, the target character removes all Christmas presents it is holding from... Sorry, 
removes all Christmas presents it is holding from the game. So they don't get dropped, they just get taken from the game. Um, Banter puts them back under the tree. They get put back under the tree. Uh, all attacks listed on this card will be rolled by the... It's the same the same thing as the other one, right? So they it well, can't benefit the same from thing anything. as the really cool crisis that that really handsome guy made. Yeah, that's the one. Um, uh -huh. <clears throat> but the, the thing with this, Quinn, that I, I really liked, and this was actually a little input from you, was you immediately score two VPs. So, Because I think the risk-reward of two VPs a cleanup is like, uh, okay. Yeah, like this way you're getting your ass handed to you, but you might close out a game mid round. Yeah. How did your game go, sweetie? Santa killed me. <laughs> <laughs> then the little sad thing. <laughs> yeah. So I think this is the highest threat that we've got on here. Uh, it is, yeah, which also means that you messed up your system again. I did mess up my system again. <laughs> yes. I did mess up my system. So, Quinn. Um, the next oh, one... look, that, that really handsome guy made another crisis. He did, yes, he did. So, 22 threat. Where can I find these custom missions? Count Lavender, they're going to be on uh, on the channel on the Discord. So I'll put a post up there afterwards. All of these, plus any others that people made, uh, are, going to be, uh, are going to be on there. Now I'm imagining the Hulk bashing people's head in with Christmas presents, wearing a hat, Santa. No, no, it's, a, it's a mega level mutant Santa. Yeah, How Santa dare you is. Merch him by comparing him to the Hulk. Google it, the guys. Puny Hulk. Santa is an omega level threat, mutant even. Yeah. Um, so twenty two threat extract: Crimson Gem Shattered, Citarax Citarac seeks new exemplar. Oh, what Place. a cool title! It is a cool title. <laughs> Place four Crimson Shard assets as shown on map D. Scoring. During the cleanup phase, players score one VP for each Crimson Shard held by characters they control. Additionally, the player controlling the character holding the Crimson Gem, spoiler alert, scores two VPs in the cleanup phase. Interact David, Crimson stop Shard. Stop punching hose. Ho punch, ho punch, ho. Um. Interact Crimson Shard, pick up Crimson Shard. Fairly straightforward, Quinn. Interact uh -huh. Crimson Gem, pick up Crimson Gem. But oh, how do we get the Crimson Gem? <laughs> hmm. Characters add one die to their attack rolls for each Crimson Shard they are holding. Characters roll one less die in their defense rolls for each Crimson Shard they are holding, to a minimum of one. If at any time... A character is holding all four crimson shards. The crimson gem is, gem is reforged, and its controlling player immediately scores four VPs. Remove all four shards and replace them with the crimson gem. A character holding the gem adds four dice to its attack rolls. Additionally, a character holding the crimson gem must make an attack action during its activation. If it does not, it is immediately KO'd at the end of its activation. <laughs> Bitterack is displeased. <laughs> yep. Yep, it's uh it's pretty it's it, it's pretty brutal. It is pretty brutal. Just a bit, how do the lowest dice pull attack work with Enchantress and Mysterio? It's a really good question, Justin. Uh I'll take a look. It, it's Santa, he gets around it. He probably gets around it. Yeah, he probably gets around it. Um, so there we go, Quinn. They are there. The five extracts and the five secures that we've got. Yeah, there, there couldn't possibly be anything else like a wild card. There's a wild card, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I wanted to make something very, very different. Um, one of my favorite comic book runs of all time probably the comic that got me into comics um is secret wars it's something that they're probably doing in the mcu they're probably not doing the original version of uh, <laughs> mission objectives <laughs> off to bob here hold this real quick <laughs> that's a really good point quinn there are some you know some characters who can get around it no, they, they instantly die. I don't no, care. they don't. Citarac cares not. <laughs> um, so, it's one of my favourite story arcs of all 
Also, um, Bob would still die because it's not an enemy effect. Good point. Fuck you. <laughs> you and your rules. Ultron, however, could come back. Ghost Rider could come back. That's fine. Ultron is just a different Ultron, and Ghost Rider literally makes a deal with the devil. Yeah, it's fine. That's fine. So, Secret Wars, Beyonder, Battleworld. It's one of my favourite things ever. But do you know what there's not in Battleworld, Quinn? There's no objectives. There's no there's no map. So, what we have is Beyonder summons heroes and villains to Battleworld. And you'll notice, Quinn, the first thing about this one is it is a secure and an extract. So, you can use this card as either when building your roster. Setup. If this crisis is randomly selected, as we do, no other crisis cards are used for the game. When building what? a roster, you can choose to count this as either an extract or secure. Madness. S absolute madness. Scoring. During the cleanup phase, players score two VPs for each enemy character that was KO'd this round. Insanity. When a non-grunt character... I put that in there, Quinn, because I was like, hang on a minute, this could get crazy. When a non-grunt character is KO'd, the controlling player rolls six dice. The player can then summon an additional character from their roster with a threat value of equal to or less than the total number of hits, crits, and wild rolled. You roll six dice, Quinn, or your character gets KO'd, you roll six dice... You roll three successes, you can bring in Scourge. Oh. <laughs> you shoo people away. Oh, okay. Um, I'm, not, I'm not having like some sort of seizure, I did wonder, don't worry. I did wonder. Um, the character is then deployed within range three of the player's board edge. On, I, on either its healthy side, if it has not yet taken part in the battle already, or on its injured side, if it has. So if you've got a character queen that's gone away, you can bring them back by using this, but you're bringing them back injured. If the character has no injured side and has already taken part in the battle, Hulk and She-Hulk, uh, it takes damage equal to 50% of its total stamina. So Hulk or She-Hulk would come in with, you know, 10, 10 damage already. All characters summoned enter the battle with power equal to what it would gain during a normal power phase. So a normal character is going to gain one, uh, an Asgardian would gain two, Hulk would come in with three or four, is it? Three. three. Um, I, I do like the fact that potentially you can have Nebula die and get a Hulk out of it. Yeah, absolutely. That's fun. This but game... also, I think you need to add the non-grunt caveat to the scoring, by the way. Oh, yes, it does need to be that. <laughs> Just because otherwise no one's ever playing Shield on this. Yeah. Um, this game does not end until a player reaches a minimum of 16 VPs. The Beyonder cares not for your rounds. <laughs> so there's always a winner, basically. Uh, and it doesn't stop at round six. It carries on going. Um, I like that either or count as not super big on much else so far. Question, how does this work with Hulkbuster's <clears throat> Tiny Man? Well, the Tiny Man would can't ever be deployed, so you could only ever bring Hulkbuster back in. So Hulkbuster would be injured. He would sorry, not injured. Hulkbuster would be dazed, but not effectively dazed. Other Hulk would come in. Sorry, Iron Man would come in. Once Iron Man was taken off the board, so if he was KO'd, then you would have the opportunity to bring Hulk Bas Hulkbuster back into you the game. You always called him Hulk Bastard. Hulk then. Bastard, yeah. Let's be honest, Swedish troll. Nobody's playing Hulk Bust. <laughs> um, but yeah, there we go, guys. Need Doom for Secret Wars? You do. You need do. Doom and Galactus and whoever else in there. I'm sure there's going to be some questions that come off the back of these, but um, yeah, we just wanted to do something. I mean, typically the answer is common sense or the rule of cool, but you know. Rule of cool, rule of cool. So yeah, 
you know, there's some characters who you just have to think a little bit about. Any questions, just let us know. Um, but yeah, look, we want to do something very different with the ones that we put together. Uh, and the fact that, you know... I, my... I just made Legacy Virus, but good. How does this interact with no, no, plays Hulk Buster? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like we said, common sense argument. Common no sense one plays Hulk Buster. No one plays Hulk Buster, yeah. Um, so yeah, look guys, um, everyone that uh, has won or everyone that's been mentioned on there is going to uh, have an entry into the November prize draw. Everyone who submitted uh, is is going to get an entry as well. And everyone who we mentioned here is going to be given uh, the opportunity to join us for the December Patreon event. And we'll be using these cards exclusively uh, when building our rosters. Um, what, what do I get for my two entries? Pardon? What do I get for my two entries? Uh, a pat on the back, Quinn. And a Christmas bonus. Oh, great. I get two jelly babies. <laughs> Pardon? You're stupid. Um, you get one and a half. <laughs> oh, come on, boss. <laughs> um, but yeah, guys, let us know what you think down in the comment section below. Do you like them? Um, again, I want to give a I want to give a shout out, Quinn, to let me just go through everyone else who who actually did them here. So to Charcoal73, to Big Chris, to Maple, to Josh, uh, to who else was there? Who did the Sling Rings one? Straker did the Sling Rings one. Um, as I said, there was some that we really liked. Quinn, one that I really did like uh, was the Symbiotes one. But that was one that we just couldn't... It was a bit too finicky on TTS to do. Um, so yeah, my local meta of one guy who still plays Hulkbuster Hulk and Scarlet Witch as he's go to a 17. <laughs> Deary me. I mean, they could just play Gen and BA Force. They could just play that's, Gen and BA that, Force. That's like so much better. <laughs> like, yeah. Oh, uh, no. And yeah, unfortunately, David, you, you was a mere 24 hours late. Um, so yeah. Apologies, apologies. Um, what does the validation? That that maple. Oh, yeah. so, snow. Apologies, I didn't realize you were maple. There we go. But also, I rescind your validation. Fuck you. <laughs> Don't be like that, Quinn. Um, Why are yeah. you not? <laughs> but um, look, I think what what this has proven, Quinn, when we've looked at all of these, and look. Have any of us built or made a a balanced play tested crisis? Absolutely not. Yes, right. my, mine are both incredibly fair and balanced. Thank you for mentioning. <laughs> I think mine definitely are. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 100%. Some, pe some people want to just watch the world burn, Mr. Wine. <laughs> Ask the wine. Um, um, I should have figured the extra deck would be an issue, but I've been using that one myself now and then. Um, and had, yeah, that was the only thing. That was the only thing. Um, so yeah, so f for secret wars, so that you can't stall out and have no cars and no chars and no winners, it would be cool if you roll less successes than your lowest threat. Your opponent picks the character. Oh, that could be. A but cool then one. that leads to potential gamifying if you don't take anything below a four threat in your roster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. He could play Air Force, but that means he can't use Avengers Assemble. Well, then he can use A Force Assemble. Basically, the same thing. The <laughs> words, are si the, the letters are similar. Uh, it was a comic word I greatly enjoyed catching up on as I was reading Marvel from the start. A lot of runs back. Yeah, no, I, I agree. Really, really enjoyed it. Really enjoyed it. Look, plot profile. I get what you're saying there, but um, it's not happening. Nobody's playing this. Nobody who's putting this in their roster. Is going to not murder people, right? That's that's what the whole point of it. So I don't think it will be too much of a problem. Um, thank you to everyone who submitted them. Um, we had a lot of fun reading them. But my point was going to be, Quinn, that I think what we've proven here is, come on, AMG, if as a community... That there are we can so many these. things you can make a crisis out of. There are plenty of thematic crises you can make. I like to think I proved that with my two. 
they're both like based on events that could very feasibly happen in Marvel. Um, I love how Ursula Gaming has just said researching Santa in the Marvel universe now, and my mind has been blown, <laughs> mate. He's a beast. He is an absolute he, he, beast. He's an absolute unit. He's yeah. a good egg as well. <laughs> he is a good egg. He is a good egg. Um, but yeah, um, look, I really enjoyed it, and I think look, we've we, we've said it time and time again. It's about goddamn time that we got more crisis cards in this game. You know, it's a good thing that we're getting them in Rhino, right? Oh, oh, oh wait. wait, no, we're not. Um, and um, yeah, look, I think this has proven that it's you know not that it's easy to do, but like it's they more could have made a crisis where do. a bunch of like rhinos escaped Central Z- Central Park Zoo <laughs> or whatever. Yeah, that's that the, been great. That's the thing. That's the thing. Um, Cool. Okay, Quinn. On to one of my favourite parts of the show, which is the painting competition. Uh, we had Rusty on last week. Actually, quick update from Rusty. Let me um, let me share this with you guys because he did have his team event um, last weekend. So he put, "Hey, pal. Update from the weekend." Secret Wars went off. Actually, I forgot he called his Secret Wars as well. Ah. Um, Secret Wars went off without too much of an issue. Eight teams, 24 players, but unfortunately, one player dropped the night before. So he had to step in as a ringer to keep the games going. Despite him only winning two games with a Brotherhood list he never played, um, the team dominated and he won his own event. <laughs> so he, he wasn't entering. Like the best possible outcome. Yeah, he got he to play lost in all his, his own event and he won it. Yeah. A little, <laughs> um, little bit of trolling about it from everyone. Um, but uh, he, <gasps> he... We can find love on the new dating site. This is... Oh, for God's sake. <laughs> God. I like how for a moment you didn't catch on and you thought I was talking about what Rusty had, Rusty had sent you. Yeah. Like, let me uh, report misinformation. Report. Um, report. What are we reporting them for this time? Uh, promotes terrorism. Yeah, fair. I think it seems, seems this, fair. This reminds... <laughs> That just reminded me of the Shatterpoint tier list where we went on a whole thing about <laughs> Barris Offy being a better or worse terrorist than Gar Saxon. I think she was better in the end. I, I um, think she was better, yeah. So he did win, but he, yeah, word from our, I like that, Justin. <laughs> yeah, and if we could just take a minute to, uh, for a word from our sponsor. Um, it's Shadow Legend. Oh, wait, no. <laughs> yeah, no. Um, Have you not had any emails from them, actually? Uh, I've had some, not from Red Shadow Legends, but. So for, what's oh, the other one? They like reach out to everyone. Uh, established titles. That's the one that's doing the rounds at the moment. Oh, the oh, you get a yeah, but of land in Scotland. Definitely not a scam. You're a <laughs> proper lord. Promise. S- Swedish troll says, "Do we really know?" Well, I wouldn't mind. There is no link. There's I, no, I, there's no you hyperlink. Just, like, click on the channel. Like I don't know. Uh, do we know if it's really misinformation? Is anyone brave enough to try it? My browser uh, sounds like you just volunteered, Swedish troll. <laughs> um, Quinn. Anyway, Rusty came on, and just to clarify, everyone, Rusty won his own event, but he did give his prize away to somebody who went five and zero, but didn't win anything, which I thought was quite nice. Um, so, uh, so yeah. Um, Rusty picked Asgard's for us, Quinn. That was his his theme of the week. And it quickly turned into Heimdall week, um, which I'm okay with, more than okay with. Um, but entry number one came to us from actually a fellow Australian and good friend of Rusty, uh, Unlucky Gamer. Um, who I've Quinn, heard they hate each other. <laughs> uh, we both had the pleasure of playing in the Patreon event that we've almost rounded up uh yeah, and this we, was... we had a great game uh we talked about like leading a coup and taking over the channel <laughs> supplanting you with matt how's that working out for you uh it's in the works it's in the works is it okay <laughs> yeah uh... well i'm not gonna tell you when we're going to strike <laughs> that would be stupid um so unlucky gamer i picked this heimdall out quinn for a couple of different reasons reason number one it's a nice paint job which always helps in a painting competition. 
Reason number two, however, was I love the fact that not only had he made the base into like, you know, the solar system, he'd taken the time to take a picture of it. And then thirdly... Like how you said the solar system. Well, not the solar system, but like the night stars. stars, basically. And yeah. thirdly is, I think he's also a D&D player. Um, obviously with the with the what he's got going on here, but he's made an effort, Quinn, with his with his background of his picture, right? I like the fact that the table is in and of itself a miniature replica of the thing that Heimdall is. Of the thing in. that he stood at, yeah, it's I really like that. good, That's isn't it? Fun. Yeah, I do like it. I do like it. So um yeah, well done, unlucky gamer. You get yourself an extra entry into November's giveaway because you are already... Well, that sounds support. like something you should be saying on the Find New Love Dating site. <laughs> Fat fingers are hard on tiny screen. Swedish troll. I'll just leave that one there. Um, you flirt. <laughs> so yeah, well done, Lucky Gamer. Uh, next honourable mention goes to the ex-Prime Minister, uh, David... Sorry, no, not that one. <laughs> but Mr David Cameron, uh, who I think he was here. I don't know if he is still here. Uh, with his no, he's M- left. You offended him. Good. Uh, with his MCU version or MCU inspired Valkyrie, uh, which uh, I did like, Quinn. I liked a little bit of um, sort of transition on the cape, cloak, cape. I learned about cloaks and capes the other day and the difference. Uh, what is it? Um, a cloak generally, it just, a cloak it just generally like, has a hood. I thought cloaks were just shorter than like capes. No, I think a cloak generally has a hood, and a cloak is generally longer. I thought yeah. it was the opposite. Yeah. See, I thought the same. But then well, I, I watched a video. Like, I watched I a video wrong. on it the other day about whether whether they should make a comeback or not. I think I watched the same video. <laughs> Did you watch it? Yeah. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I really liked this. Quinn, you also picked this one out as well. What uh, what did you like about this one? I actually really like you know you know on like the sort of greaves and like sort of that area, like all, all of the straps on that I think are actually picked out really well and it's something I always struggle with in my own painting because I get bored. <laughs> <laughs> but like yeah, they they stand out but they're still like that they're not incongruous with like the rest of the paint job. Yeah. No, I agree. Cloak yeah, David, goes I think, all around. I think, well, go? it's only one of the things that's defining between a cloak. Perhaps it's more of a shawl or an amis. <laughs> I'm more of a capelet kind of guy myself. Do you know, I need to get myself a good cape. You know what? I, I, I'm more of like, you know, a Mandalorian over the shoulder half cape. Nice. That, that, that's I do like it. I do like it. So, yeah, David, well done. Yeah, uh, shorter, or a very good. wide scarf. Hey, nuclear kid. <laughs> Um, so yeah, well done, David. Uh, we really liked that one. And then, Quim, we talk a lot, don't we, about how we we don't want the same people to be getting recognition week in, week out. Um, we try and mix it up. We Bit don't of a struggle, though, isn't it? <laughs> but however, Brushnicker posted. Let me just zoom out ever so slightly on this one, just so you can see it fully in all of its glory. Uh, Brushnicker submitted this Heimdall uh, this week. Um, and we have ignored him for a couple of weeks. Uh, but I felt like we couldn't ignore we, him we, any we longer. We left him out in the garden in um, the rain. And now he's allowed back in the house. Yeah. Um, how do we get these contests? I know I've heard you say before, but can't recall. Do you have to be part of the Patreon to participate? John, 100% you do not need to be part of the Patreon. Uh, you'll find a link in the description of this video to our Patreon. Sorry, to our... You will find it to the Patreon, but to the Discord. Um, And in there, you'll see weekly painting competitions. Um, Join the Discord, and you can put all of your entries in there. Um, But yeah, we're going to have to get Brushnicker on the show, Quinn, and show us how to paint, because... I always think we'd be like, useless anyway. You know, I'm, I'm I'm painting some little things up at the moment, some Bushido things, and I, I look at it and and I, and I go like, yeah, look, oh, yeah, I've done a good job there. And, and, and then, then I see something, something like, like this, like, and I go, I am. And, but and then a, you like snap your paintbrush in half <laughs> and rage. I am but a child, but a child. Um, I love the don't, NMM. Don't but a child. <laughs> don't, don't but a child. No, uh, I love the NMM on the sword. I love the transition on the horns. 
it's it's yeah, the opposite it's, it's, of what you normally it, see in terms it, of dark to light, light right? rather than light to dark. The, there are some animals that do that yeah. though. Because I'm trying to think of what is what is isn't it teeth that are the other way around? Oh, I don't know. I think teeth are well, like I mean, lighter... your teeth should be just all the same color. Well, no, I, I mean like there. animal teeth, like <laughs> ones with like big canines and shit. Yeah, because the the points are the points are um, brighter. They're, they're they're lighter because like they're, they're new, like they're more recently grown, but also I think they're worn more often, and therefore like. Obviously, well, no, the points out more bit. recently grown. No, the points are the eldest part of it. Wait, what? Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's how teeth work, Quinn. They don't is, grow is in woods. Is that how teeth work? <laughs> is that how teeth work? Yes. That's how, that's how hair works. I it's know that. It's also how teeth work. <laughs> unless, how you're works. A, unless you're a shark and you just have rows, you just have rows of teeth. Well, yeah, and then like they just fall out and you get new ones, don't you? Yeah, for exactly. the rest of your life that may or may not like last hundreds of years because there was that one shark they found in Greenland, didn't there? Yeah, um, but yeah, brush they're also care. older than trees. They are, for anyone yes. who didn't know, um, really well done on that. Um, yeah, absolutely stunning paint job. And as I say, we may have to get you on the show at some point to teach us all how to paint. Uh, not quite as good as you, but you know, somewhere. Somewhere like you can, you um, can at least make us passable. Justin says, "Where do you get the smallest brush possible? Mine are never small enough to do such details." I, I would say, Justin, that the size of the brush is oh, we go the important part. No, no, Not the size of the brush. It's how you use it. All no, right, it's right, the right. it's the tip of the brush, right? I my yeah, standard brush is a size four rosemary and co, which is quite a big brush but the tip on this is better than any tip of any brush i own so even though it's a bigger brush because the tip's so good um it just works really really well uh, i'm posting my amateur mediocre paint job so i can track progress even if they stand on out among the better ones mate nobody sh i always think nobody should ever go back and redo a paint job because I think you should keep it as like a to show yourself how much you've progressed over the time. Yeah, I, I think the exact opposite because a lot of my old paint jobs piss me off. <laughs> um, I'm like you could be so much better. Rich says just the tip. <laughs> oh dearie me. Um, quality of brush is a big deal. I use Rosemary and Co brushes. Size zero is my workhorse. I do have a size zero. Um, so I do have a size zero, but I mean, also take care of your brushes if you can get like a little pot of brush cleaner. That's get yourself great some idea. I use this stuff here. For, for so, so it's Does a your brush one soap. smell lemony? Because my one smells lemony. Well, I also Quinn use this the master's brush soap or whatever that is. Acrylic. It's called Zest It, um, and it's it's for basically effective and it, for. An effective and efficient solvent for reviving brushes stiff with acrylic paint. I use these on my sable brushes, Quinn. And not only does it not damage them, it cleans every last drop of paint out of them. So you don't have any particles left back over. So Oh, also, yeah. for really fine details like eyes, uh, I'm a very big fan of the AO Blaze Medium. Because yep. it changes the surface tension of the paint you've got to make it just go where your brush goes and nowhere else. Like, there's no amount of, like, it doesn't, like, splooge off the brush yeah. in any way. Uh, my daily driver is a size 4 Artis Opus. I also use Artis Opus. Detail work is usually a what, yeah. Oh, yeah, I like Winter how you the bit where it said overrated. <laughs> <laughs> I did, yeah. I like, I, I mean, I use... I've got my artist soap. I don't know where you buy them for as like presents for people, don't you? Yeah, yeah. I got my, um, I got my, um, my girlfriend's uh, stepdad uh, for his birthday. Uh, it was a birthday or Christmas. I got him a, a five set. I got my, the kids bought me one for Father's Day. So the dry brushes, uh, which are really good. Um, so yeah, but they are they are expensive. Um, Queen, we need to pick a theme for this week, and it should have been mine last week. So do you want me to take it this week 
or do you want to take it this week? I'm, I'm happy well, I either think way. You should have it because you've in effect missed out on one. Okay. And in the name of fairness, you go now. In the name of Quinn can't think of one. Um, I, mean, I definitely fucking can. <clears throat> so, Rhino's been announced. Is it going to be Spider Foes and Crimson? Rhino is an. We a- taking the low hanging fruit. <laughs> Rhino is an animal. Oh. So, I want any character who either has an animal in their name, so Black Panther, for example, or... Panthers technically don't exist. They're a classification of other big cats that are just black in colour. That's not true. It it is. No, it's not. Yeah, a black lion is called a panther. It's a classification of big cat. So technically, Black Panther is black, black, big cat. No, no, a black panther is a type of panther. Oh, yeah, panthers just exist, don't they? Yeah. <laughs> Wait, what? Wait, where, where's the thing I... Wow. A black no, panther a thing. is the melana- melanistic panther colour variant panther. of the leopard. And a leopard is panthera pardus. So you're Wait. thinking of panthera Wait. that is the generic term. No, there was something that was specifically no. for black, like ones. Do you know black. what, Quinn? That fucking Zoomer education you got don't go very far, does it? Well, it was set up by boomers like you, wasn't it? <laughs> I'm not a boomer. You fucking are. You're yeah, a boomer so in spirit and body. Panthera is a generic term that covers many, but the black panther is a variant of a leopard and a jaguar. There you go. Yeah, so it's not an animal. It's a leopard or a jaguar. (laughs) It's a fucking animal. No, it's a leopard or a jaguar, which are animals. It's just a black one. Anyway, so, um, so anyone that anyone that has you know is is an animal, right? Has animal in their name or is an actual animal. So let me give you some examples. Just just so shit face here doesn't get confused. Black Panther counts. Iron Man doesn't count. <laughs> Lockjaw counts. Malekith counts because he's riding a bog tiger. Um, who else? Wolverine Question. counts. Question. Honey Badger counts. X-23 doesn't. Question. Go on. Can we also allow Craven because he hunts animals and he's wearing animals? No. Um. Because a Craven's not an animal. No, but you are a Craven. I'm not a fucking craven. coward. Craven has quite a lot of animal on him. Yeah, exactly. Like he, he's wet, like half of his model is animal because he's wearing them. <laughs> um, Spider Man, obviously. Um, yeah, I know uh, it's a. Bit I, of... I will agree. A spider is an animal. Yeah. Um, who else? Ghost Spider, obviously. Ghost Spider, but, yes. Ghost go, Rider, go, oh, no. Oh. <laughs> but a ghost spider isn't an animal. A spider is an animal, though. A spider's an animal, but a, right, a spider-man is isn't an animal. <laughs> By your well, yeah, logic. It is, well, no, but both parts of that name are animals. Spiders are animals. Men are animals. <laughs> anyway. Anyway. Um, so, yeah, that's the thing for this man. Week. He's a man. Men are animals. Yes. NSPK. Black Widow, Quinn. I like that. That, that that's a good one. That's a good um, one. That is a good one. Like, none of the ones on my desk are animals. A magneto isn't an animal, is it? A magneto is not an animal. Toad. Toad. How did we forget Toad? Like oh oh oh! I know he's not out yet, and he probably won't be out by the time of this. But if you got a three D print, can we have Blob? Because Blobfishes exist. No, it's not. Oh. It's not a thing. Um, what, what no rhino 3D printing. A, a blobfish is definitely a thing. <laughs> I know it is, but uh, and no rhino 3D prints either, guys. I won't accept them. Um, I'm not a huge oh. fan of people buying 3D like before they come out, sort of thing. I don't, I'm not a huge fan of that. Is there going to be some sort of weird thing where there's like a kingpin shark? Could be. Technically, he counts that way. Saber tooth. There we go. It, I, I think if you can get some like actual like. 
John, he's not a goddamn raccoon. He's not a goddamn raccoon, John. He's not a raccoon. <laughs> he's like a genetic, he's like a weird cybernetic thing, isn't he? He is, yeah. But we will accept Rocket Raccoon, obviously. Uh, okay, so if you're an animal or animal presenting. Bob is an animal. I'm bed. <laughs> your, your bed? What? I'm... <laughs> I think Justin's meant to say I'm in bed. <laughs> no, I think he means to say that Bob is an animal in bed. Oh, okay. <laughs> there we go. Um, right, so there we go, guys. That is going to be the theme for this week. Uh, hopefully you've enjoyed this show. Well done to everyone who entered. I'm going to continue Googling the Panther thing because I go. remember that being a thing. There we go. Um, the Patreon event will be starting tomorrow, quick. That's a day. Yep, tomorrow. Um let me double check. Is tomorrow the thir first? Yes, tomorrow is the first. So at some point tomorrow, it'll be getting set up. Um, you do have a last chance to enter it. Uh, we can do that is uh, purely by being a Patreon. Uh, yeah, so there's a tier on there. I, I am right about the panther thing. A panther is like just a different coloured version of another animal. It's not a different animal. But it's still an animal. Well, no. Well, it's an animal, but it's not like an... It's not... Panther is not its own animal. It's you, you are a panther jaguar. A black panther, panther is an animal. I don't understand why they need the word black in there though, because panther in and of itself means cat that is a like cat that is black. Anyway, it's very confusing. Thanks for the all work. I don't know. Look forward to seeing the mocked up cards. There we go. They're all going to get put in there, guys. I, 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 I like that. The speed read there. Yeah, the speed read. Um, <laughs> guys, uh, Patreon, Discord, uh, likes, all that do, sort of do, stuff. Do things. <laughs> things good. Um, mm. We will catch you next time, guys. Uh, yeah, take care. Stay well. <laughs>